you don't have to carry it all. Well, that's a message for all of us. It's also a message former Good Morning America anchor Paula Ferris has for working moms. In her new book, she's calling on women to ditch mom guilt, and she offers them a better way forward. She also told CBN's Jenna Browder that corporate America and the church should do more to support working moms. She's one of America's most well-known journalists. Paula Ferris. I love you all. In 2014, Paula Ferris began her tenure on ABC's Good Morning America weekend and The View, a woman at the top of her game. Then in 2018... While Paula is moving on from GM May weekend, she's still going to be a huge part of the ABC team. She decided to pump the brakes and asked to step away from those duties to a reporter role. I felt like... I wasn't seeing my husband or my kids. I wanted to be with my children. Um, my schedule was just really crazy. One year later, ABC News chose not to renew her contract. Faced with a decision about what to do next, she chose a less familiar path. I really decided to try something new, which is why we kind of blew up our lives and hit that great big reset button. We moved to a small town in South Carolina um, where my sister lives. And I decided to pursue uh, a company of my own. The first words that pop into your mind about what it's like to be a working mom. Based on her own experience, Paula started Carrie Media to advocate for working moms. And I just saw how women were treated once they became mothers, how they were valued less and scrutinized and penalized for having children instead of just being celebrated. Fast forward to 2023, and she's out with a new book. You don't have to carry it all. Ditch the mom guilt and find a better way forward. Two questions. What is mom yeah. guilt? for you and, <laughs> um, and, and why the title? Yeah, I mean, mom guilt, um, it's not just for me, like 80 to 90% of mothers uh, suffer from some level of mom guilt. And it's just never feeling like we're enough, like we're never present enough, we're not a good enough mom. We're always projecting some sort of guilt upon ourselves. And so much of that is because in America, motherhood isn't really celebrated. And there's not a lot of support for being a mother. In other countries, I found something that blew my mind was that mothers globally um, not only have to work, but they take a lot of pride in working and helping to contribute to the home. But on the other side of that, the attitudes in other countries towards children and families are so much better here in America. It's like, oh, your kid, your problem, figure it out. Paula calls the book Practical and Tactical and starts with a history lesson to show moms how to ditch that guilt. I nerded out. And in one of the chapters about the history of American families. And so often we think, let's go back to the 50s and 60s, the good old days. And, I, you know, we have nostalgia for the past. I was guilty of that, too. But in researching the history of American families, I learned that the most traditional family in America was when the husband and wife, the mother and the father, they co-produced together. They raised the children together. Um, and of course, you know, women didn't always have the same amount of rights that we do uh, today, but they were working together. They were raising the children together. That's the most traditional family. When it comes to corporate America, Paula says working moms add tremendous value. In recent years, there have been some big steps forward, including more flexible and remote work, paid family leave, and efforts to bring women's salaries in line with men's. Still, Paula says there's more to do and list some other ideas like providing affordable childcare and establishing more moms in positions of leadership. A born-again Christian, Paula includes a chapter on the church. I struggled with working outside of the home because of, you know, the messages that I heard from church and my faith circles. And so I tackle that in the book, too. Um, it's a really hard chapter for me to write, but it's very freeing about what the scriptures actually say about women, mothers, our role in society at home and at work. In her research, she talked to the head theologian at Proverbs 31 Ministries, who points out that in the beginning, man and woman labored together. They divided tasks and responsibilities equally. He gives many examples of women working outside the home, including Deborah, a judge and prophetess in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, Priscilla and Phoebe. He also highlights the Proverbs 31 woman. But I learned that the Proverbs 31 woman, who we often reduce to a, you know, a domestic housewife, was actually a skilled businesswoman and negotiator. A negotiator, the security of her community was on her shoulders. She was a manager. She bought a field with her earnings. And so often we have weaponized work as if this isn't part of God's plan. But that's not the case. 
And that's where I think the church can do a lot better is just celebrate that, look, the best families are when uh, both the mother and the father are actively involved. We're raising the children together. We're co-producing. Paula makes the case that the scriptures give sound reason and even permission for women to work outside the home and embrace their God-given ambitions. That's what she says she's trying to do through her company and this new book. And she hopes it encourages others to do the same and bring about a more mom-friendly work culture. End of the day, what I'm trying to do, yes, advocate for mothers in the workforce, but I'm really hoping that it strengthens families. We say we're a family-friendly country, but our policies and our attitudes say something totally different. Jenna Browder, CBN News. Well, I'm all for celebrating motherhood, and I want a culture that celebrates and encourages mothers uh, to say, yes, we're with you, we're with you on this, whether it's in the church, the corporate world, uh, or just your everyday interactions, how can we celebrate that, and how can we say, how can we help you? Uh, some of my best friends are working mothers, and they weren't content with just saying, well, I'm gonna have a couple of children. They had to go out and adopt a bunch more. And then they turned around and said, well, I, every child in the world is now my responsibility. So, Terry, well, how did you carry it up? Because, let me say, I, for six years, I didn't. When my, mm. my initial family was first coming, um, by the time number three arrived, I thought it wasn't you don't need to carry it all, I couldn't carry it all. But beyond that, there was a part of me as a mom that didn't want to miss out on all those first moments and all those nurturing times that I was going to have someone else do for me. So for six years, I stayed out of the workforce and um, came back here when I went in or came So here. you didn't like that phrase, reduced to a housewife? No, I. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. clap back on that one. Yeah, I, I think I think moms have a remarkable opportunity to um, make a difference in the world around them. I don't think you have to just sit home knitting and cooking meals and planning your meals. I think there's a whole world out there that when you have a full-time job, you really don't get to invest in. I mean, it was to me, I had the privilege of doing six years. It yeah. was a financial. Hardship. Dive for yeah. our family, but none. I don't regret a it. second of it. Perfect. Absolutely, it. absolutely. And you did a good job. <laughs> I will you. say, as a father, we need to celebrate fathers too. When we had our third baby, uh, suddenly we were both overwhelmed. We couldn't play man-to-man -man defense. We had to go to zone because there's just too many kids <laughs> to cover. Uh, so, but let's celebrate it because this is our future. This is the yeah. future of the country. It's the future of the world. Uh, so why not celebrate it? So Paula Paris's latest book is titled You Don't Have to Carry It All. And that's a really good message for all of us. You can find it wherever books are sold.